Shalom, shalom. It's your brother Shemayim coming back with another lesson. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying to the elect, to the sheep. You know, the Lord Yahweh Shah says, if you love me, feed my sheep. He told Peter three times. It is our duty to feed the sheep, you know, because we're supposed to tell the sheep this gospel, which goes into good news, you know, and ultimately these scriptures is comforting, man, you know. Everything that we're going through right now, there's a purpose for it and there's a reason and it's worth for us to strive, you know, for the kingdom, man, for us to search the kingdom first above all things, like the scripture says, you know, first and foremost, to start off this lesson by giving all praises, honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Raka Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and taught me this truth. Shalom to the Baya Dawada and Shalom to them, um, sincere Akwathium who are staying in order according to the scriptures. You know, let's get straight to it. You know, um, I made a video yesterday about how Esau, you know, um, admits that he's inferior you know, to um, to Israelites, you know. He mentioned Judah in particular, but, you know, through the spirit, he's inferior to the whole nation of Israel, you know, and um, how he's a servant to us, you know. Like I said, he mentioned Judah in particular, you know, but, he, but he's going to be a servant to the whole nation of Israel, you know, Yasharala. Um... So this scripture, I mean, these scriptures that I have lined up for you guys, for your brothers, you know, low willingness um, is um, comforting, you know, and also motivation for us to keep fighting this good fight of faith, you know, because Esau, man, Esau is not going to have rulership forever, forever. He's not going to have dominion forever. The Lord, is, the Lord is breaking the staff for the wicked, as the scripture says, you know, and I got a couple of scriptures, you know, um, going in on Esau. So, you know, all through the spirit. So let's start off with the book of Revelation. Chapter 13, verse nine. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Now, when it says if any man have an ear, all men have ear. So what does this mean? There's a deeper a deeper um, message. You know, it's a parable. If any man have an ear, let him hear. It's talking about if any man have understanding, let him understand. Verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Esau, Edom is the number one crook, right? Let's call him that. He's the number one crook that that led our nation, our people, into captivity. He is the one that goes around the world killing with the sword. You know, back then was a, 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 a literal sword, which was his blessing. And present time today, his sword is a gun. And and he shows this throughout all his works, man. Throughout all all his um, throughout all history, he has shown that he. This is what Esau does, man. He goes conquer, he goes kills, he goes enslave people. You know now he does it by by going into all these other nations or third world countries, and and so called lending them money. Right. To help them, you know, um, economically, if you will, knowing that these countries won't be able to pay it back. So now once these countries build off the off the, the money, if you will, that Esau has given them. Now they're they're um, these tourist sites or whatever, every money that is that is um, um, created by whatever. um you know, um, whatever these these countries have built off the money that Esau has given them, whatever money is produced, 
is being is being sent back to America to pay off. You know, so at the end of the day, all these other countries, they're still in slavery to Esau Edom, man. They in debt to Esau Edom. As the scriptures have said that we are in in, in um we are we are in debt to payment. You know? Let's continue in verse 10. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And, and, and this is a, a comfort of scripture, man. Because the Lord is going to put Esau in captivity. The Lord is going to take out Esau with the sword, man. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So be patient, brother. Be patient. We almost out of here, man. We're measuring the time diligently in itself, and we seeing what's happening. The economy is shattering, right? Inflation is here. Hyperinflation right around the corner. You know, um, famine is almost here. Famine of the word is almost here. I was just watching a video on, on, on a social media platform, but it was this white Edomite talking about how civil war is right around the corner. And we've been telling people this, man. Book of Matthew chapter 24, right? Rumors of wars, kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation. You know, America's called the melting pot for a reason, man. It's full of nations in, in, this, in this land. And civil war is coming, man. You know, second Ezra, sedition among men. A man should have no pity upon his neighbor. You know? Hey, man, we, we are truly in perilous times. You know, which means dangerous times. This is a year of turn up. Let's continue in the book of Zechariah, chapter 2, verse 8. For thus says the Lord Yahweh of hosts. The Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Shai, is the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord of armies, man. There's a book, there's a scripture, if I'm not mistaken, in the book of 2 Kings, you know, where it talks about that there is more of them that be with us than them that be with them. You know, roughly paraphrasing it. There's more of us, man. There's more angels. Right? And the angels are part of our army, man. They're the, they're, and, they're, and they're the Lord's army. You know, there's more of them that be with us than them. You know, Esau, Esau, Edom has his army, has his troop, has his technology, has his, has his um allies, if you will. You know, and ultimately, you know, there's a there's a worldly saying that says the the enemy of my enemy is a friend. So when you have a shot, crack them clouds, man. Everybody's gonna go against you know, um um. Against Yahweh by Shai, and even in in and even with that, you know, everybody uniting every nation in the, in the, in the midst of the a third world, which is World War Three, when the nations are going against Babylon, right? Even in the midst of that, when they join together against Yahweh by Shai, there is still more of us. That's faith. That that's that right there shall be a faith booster, man. To fear not what man can do unto you. This is why we got to be a faithful servant unto death. You know? Zechariah 2 and 8. For thus says the Lord of hosts. You know, there's a scripture that says, you know, I'm not mistaken, in the book of, I believe it's Jeremiah 34 or Isaiah 34, where it says the, the, the host of heaven shall dissolve. And this is in the time of the third world when, when all these, you know, military um, aircrafts are, are flying and, and, and they're trying to go against the chariots, you know, in the Lord. But the ICB, ICBM missile is going gonna, is gonna, to, you know, reach those, those um, um, military aircrafts, you know, and they're going to be dissolved, man. You know, and, and um, also with the... With the with the lasers of the chariots, man. So, Zechariah 2 and 8. For thus says the Lord of hosts, after the glory has he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you touches the apple of his eye, man. You know, and we are the Lord's, um, we're the apple of his eye. We are precious to the Lord. 
we are important to the Lord, man. And the Lord, the Lord is, is sending Yahweh Shah, man, to take vengeance upon these heathens, upon these Edomites, man. Right? So, hey, man, hopefully, hopefully you, 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 you understand how important you are to the Lord. So this is why our people must repent right now. Our people must wait, must wake up, man. There's a scripture in the Romans 13, if I'm not mistaken, verse 10 or 11. Uh, for now, it's high time to wake out of sleep. Let me just get it through the spirit, man. Romans 13, verse 11. And that, knowing the time. See, knowing the time. Knowing what time we are in. Right? We're in the time that the Lord is breaking the staff of the wicked, man. We're in the time where the Lord is, 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 is taking Esau's power from him. You know? We're in the time of perilous times, man. We're in the time with Jacob's trouble. Is 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 right in front of us, man. It's only a matter of time before the Lord allows us to go through it. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we believed, Yasharala. It is nearer than we believed. You know, this is the book of Malachi, chapter one, verse four. Whereas Edom says, we are impoverished, but we will return and build and, and, Salakia, and build the desolate places. Thus says the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord has indignation forever. Remember, Esau, Edom has touched the apple of his eye, man. We are the apple of the Lord's eye, man. So the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh has an indignation against Esau, Edom forever. The Lord is calling them the border of wickedness, man. America has been ripped, has been rebuilt or built off the bloodshed, sweat, sweat, tears. You know, of the so-called black man, of the so-called Latino and the so-called Native American. Right? Esau Edom thinks that that his his house shall last forever. But the Lord, the Lord will throw it down, man. The Lord is not gonna allow it, the Lord's gonna destroy it. The scripture says in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, that it should be a uh uh either Jeremiah 51 or 50. That Babylon shall, shall be a, a, a desolate, man. A desolate place. A desert place. America will never be able to build again. This is the book of Genesis. Chapter 25, verse 23. And the Lord said unto her, you know, talking to Rebecca, talking about Rebecca, and the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. And two manners of people shall be separated from thy bowels. So Rebecca has twins in her belly. And the Lord from before they were born is already declaring that there were two nations in her womb. You know, the descendants of each of these of these men shall shall be a nation. One is Esau Edom. His descendants are the so-called white men, you know. And the other nation is is um from Jacob, which Jacob's name got changed to to Israel, you know, after he wrestled the angel, you know, the Lord ordained the angel to change his name to Israel. So now, you know, we are the descendants of Israel. That's why we are Israelites. We're not Israelis, we're not Jewish, you know, we are the we are the biblical Israelites, the true and chosen nation of Yahweh Bahashim Shai. You know? So it says, And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. 
and the one people shall be stronger than the other people. Who who is stronger? So called black man, Latino, Native American, right? Or the so called white man? Who 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 is stronger? You know, obviously the so called black man, Latino, and Native American. We are stronger than than the nation of Esau Edom. Continue, and the elder shall serve the younger. Esau Eden was born first. So who's serving who now? We are serving Esau Edom. So it says, and the elders shall serve the younger. Meaning this is future prophecy. This hasn't happened yet. The Lord is going to come and take out Esau Edom from his rulership, man. Do you understand this? I'm speaking to you, bro. Do you understand that the Lord is taking Esau Edom off his high horse, man? The Lord, the Lord is knocking him off his high horse. Let's get this right. The book of Second Ezra. You know, this is not going to be a, a, a long lesson. You know, this little one, this lesson is edifying, man. Second Ezra chapter six, verse seven. Then answered I and said, What shall be the part in the sunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that follow it? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Representing the pulling down of Esau's rulership, man. The pulling down of Esau's, you know, um, um, queendom. For Esau is the, verse 9, for Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob, the beginning of it that followeth. So it's talking about, when it's talking about worlds, it's talking about eon. Talking about the era, the age. The age of, or the era of Esau ruling is coming to an end. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. So the Lord is coming back to put us in our rightful place as kings and judges of the world to come. You know? Let's go to the book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 11 to 15. And it says, In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. And close up the breaches thereof. See, so the Lord is building up the tabernacle of David, man. The house of David. And close up the breaches thereof. Because of, there was a separation between the northern tribe and the southern tribe. You know, we, we have an evil eye against each other, man. Always going against each other. And we are the same. So-called black man, Latino, Native American. We are the same people, man. The Lord says he's closing up the breaches thereof, man. So the Lord is putting us back together, man. As the scripture says, two sticks shall be one. You know, in, in my camp, we have brothers from Judah, you know, southern kingdom. And then we have brothers from, from northern tribe, including myself, man. You know, and, 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 and we have a, a powerful um, brotherhood bond. The Lord has, has, has is closed up the breaches thereof, man. And I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as the days of the old, that they may possess the remnants of Edom. Esau, Edom, get ready for slavery, man. The Lord says that we are going to possess the remnant of you, man. And all the heathens, which are called by my name, says the Lord, that doeth this. The Lord, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushua, has ordained this. And he has said it will happen. And it will. He is the one that does this, man. This is the Lord's movie. Verse 13. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. And the treader of grapes, him that soweth seeds. And the mountains shall drop sweat wine. And all the hills shall melt. And mountains is going into... Into you know um um governments, you know um, um um people that have power, you know, people in political chairs, if you will. 
the mountain shall drop um, sweet wine. We're talking about your blood, and the hills shall melt. Also talking about your 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 your, your blood, man, for you Edomites and you heathens, and and the uh, and the strongest mountain, you know, is is Mount Zion, man, which goes into monument, which goes into Israel. We are we are we are uh, our Mount Zion. We are that monument. We're going to be over all nations. You know? And I'm going to do a lesson on that. Because I, I did a lesson yesterday going into um how Esau revealed, you know, um that he's... A, well, actually, it was this morning, not even yesterday. It was early, early this morning. How he he, he admits that he's inferior and, and inferior and, um, and a servant to Judah. And in that lesson... You know, I, I spoke about, I brought up a scripture that said in Mount Zion, and I said that Mount Zion is a monument, which it is. But then, you know, I had like a brain fart, and 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 um, I wanted to speak more about Mount Zion, but you know, I'm gonna do a little more research and, and bring out a short, quick lesson because it shouldn't be too long. You know, depending what the spirit wants to bring out, but I'm gonna do a, a lesson, you know, Lord willing, on on Mount Zion, man, and what it means. You know, and proving that we are Mount Zion. You know, because deliverance is for Mount Zion, man. You Israelites, man. So let's continue, right? I'm in the book of Amos, chapter 9, verse uh, verse 14. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. And they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. So look, man, who you think is going to build, you know, the kingdom, the cities in, in Israel, man? When we have the kingdom, the remnants of Esau, Edom, and you heathens, man, you're going to be slaves to us. And I will bring up again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the way cities and inhabit them. We're going to inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine there. We're going to have vineyards, man. Pure vineyards. They they said that back then it took two people to 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 hold the uh damn I forgot what's the proper name. You know, for for lack of better words, like a like a like a branch of grapes. What's the word? Uh, let me see. Give me a second. There's a saying for it. Uh, a cluster, Brakata Yahawa, Brakata Yahawa Shai, a cluster, clusters of grapes, man. The main stem of the cluster in the in the in the ratchets and the smaller stems that grow off the ratchets are known as lateral branches. The stems that connect the grapes to the lateral branches are the pedicels. You know, it's, it's beautiful, man. We're going to have pure, pure grapes, man. You know? So in Amos 9 and, and 14, it says, And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. And they shall also make garden and eat the fruit of them. Hey, man, the kingdom's going to be beautiful, brothers. The kingdom's going to be beautiful because Esau, Edom won't be ruling no more. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I gave them, says the Lord thy God, man, our power. So after the Lord puts us back in a, in a, in a rightful place, man, no one will ever be able to take us out of power because our, the laws are going to be written in our inward parts. We are going to be perfect. Yahweh Bashem is going to dwell with us forever. We're going to be in rulership forever, man. Right? No one, no one shall be able to pull us out of their land, of our land that the Lord has given us. Right? We're going to finish it off with Jeremiah 16 from verse 16 to 21. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 16. Behold, I will send for many fishes. And this is what, this is what we're doing right now, man. We are fishing. The Lord has made us a fisherman. Right? The Lord has made us a fisherman. We, 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 we throw the hook. You know what I'm saying? And then the Lord, the Lord allows the, the, the fishes, you know, to, to, to bite the hook and we pull them in. Right. My, my people hear my voice. 
right? My sheep hear my voice, right? As Yahweh Shai says, you know, um, and then it is a good fish, they stay because they're meant to be part of the elect, and if they're not a good fish, they're thrown out, man. There's a lot of people that heard this truth and then and they're not listening. There's a lot of people that heard this truth and they're not hearkening on to the voice of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. There's a lot of people that the Lord has stretched their hand out, given them warning, and they have refused, you know, the hand of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You know, meaning they have refused to not listen in that sense. You know? Uh, there's, a scripture, there's a scripture that backs that up that says, you know, uh, many are called, but few are chosen. It's the book of Jeremiah 16, verse 16. Continue, right? Behold, I will send for many fishes, says the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters. So look, man, we're waiting for the Lord to come and exalt us. We're waiting for the Lord to come give us, uh, to come increase our spiritual powers to the max. Because we already have it in the low level, but we want it to be increased to the max when we have spiritual, spiritual bodies, man. The Lord is going to turn us into hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. Because you Edomites are going to go hide in your bunkers and your mountains and your in, in holes, man, to try to escape the judgment of the Lord. Right? And 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 most likely, you low-level Edomites, you're going to be taken out, man. It don't matter where you hide. But you elites, the Lord is purposely gonna allow you to survive why so that we can go hunt you down man and put you in 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 in, in, in um in chains and shackles man and uh, some of you are gonna be killed by us right on the spot but the rest of you like the scripture says we're gonna possess the remnants of esau edom so the rest of you that are left is the remnants and you're going to build up the kingdom of Israel, man. You're going to build up the kingdom of Yahweh by Shem Shah. And you're going to be a slave. You're going to be a slave. You're going to be a possession to us, like I read earlier in the book of Amos. Right? And, and this is how you're going, this is how we're going to do it. The Lord's going to turn us into hunters. Verse 17. For mine eye are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face. Neither is their iniquity hid from mine eyes cannot escape the lord man you cannot escape the lord you think that no one no one sees you man but the lord sees you man so hey man this is this is uh uh, uh also uh, uh comforting to the people lord willing you know letting you know that whatever esau edom does to you personally at your job at the supermarket you know um anywhere anywhere in the streets while you're driving the Lord sees it, brother. The Lord sees it. You know? Just be patient, brother. All right, let's continue in verse 17. Uh, verse 18. And first, I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double. The Lord, hey, the scripture says in the book of, uh, I believe, 1 Thessalonians. Uh, it is a righteous thing to recompense tribulation to them that trouble thee, man. It is a righteous thing for the Lord to recompense tribulation, payback. So in Jeremiah 16, 17, I mean 18, and first I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double because they have defiled my land. They have filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their de um, detestable and abominable thing. Oh Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahushua, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. The Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth, and they shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanities, things wherein there is no profit. Because these Edomites, right, believe that, that everything that their forefathers have done is, is, is right. That they're that they're the they should be the they are the kings, not the servants. That they are over us, right? Not in, not inferior. That 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 God looks like them, right? Hey man, they have inherited lies, right? The Edomites and the heathens are gonna know that their fathers have inherited lies, man. And there's no profit in them, right? 
Verse 20, shall a man make gods unto himself, and they are no gods? Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know, I will cause them to know that my hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is the Lord. Amen. All nations shall bow down. All nations shall know the power of Yahweh Bashem Shai. You eat them us in particular. You are gonna know why Yahweh Bashem Shai has raised you up on this, on this side right now, on this age, in this era, in this time period, and you are gonna pay, pay, and burn, and you're gonna learn, man. You know, so hey, man. Like I started this lesson, man. This is the patience of the saints. All right. Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. Lord willing, this lesson was comforting. You know, um, let's finish off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Shalom to the Bayadawada, Wa Akwathium, you know, DTA, Ababa Ball, Kwam Yasharala. Lord willing, on to the next one. Shalom.